Good evening, everybody. Welcome. I welcome you all to today's session on marketing cybersecurity products. Today we have with us Mr. Vinay Ponse. He's the vice president of DSCI. We have Mr. Sahil. He is CEO of Smokescreen, and we have Mr. Rahul. He is the CEO and founder of CloudSec. And and um, we have another panelist, Mr. Kailash. He will join us in a few minutes from now. So I would request Mr. Vinay to start the session. Thank you, Sanam. Uh, thanks, uh, Sahir and Rahul for agreeing to join this panel. So we uh, thought to have this panel, which is not a typical cybersecurity subject, but somehow we are seeing the cybersecurity industry in the country is growing and startups like you have been making those stories basically in the country about uh, cybersecurity technology development and creating a successful startups out of it. And uh, uh, when we discuss about business, the marketing is now becoming very important core uh, central function of any business and especially for technology business like us, which has a market not uh, to the limited to the local market, but probably all across the globe. And uh, uh, when we are uh, looking at a uh, very deep tech cybersecurity product, uh, uh, probably positioning that product, positioning the activities around that product, looking at the organization which are building that product, the people working in the organization, and also the driving the value that basically you are being uh, through the products and technology that you have been uh, trying to bring to the table. So I think we just, we thought and there was some little discussion which we had between uh, uh, some of the CEOs of a cybersecurity startup, if what people are doing and what best practices that we have been deploying in marketing function. So let's have a discussion around this topic and probably uh, we thought last week and we immediately got on uh, to set up this particular podcast, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the virtual panel discussion where we thought uh, we can have all of those perspectives, like Sai, uh, uh, which is uh, developing and probably working on a very deep uh, reception technology in cybersecurity, whereas Rahul uh, uh, looks at uh, uh, a very interesting solution in a deep web and dark web kind of area. And uh, uh, Kailash Katkas, who just joined uh, us now, who sells both the consumer and uh, uh, enterprise security solution as well. Um, so, uh, and then there are a lot of new cybersecurity startups coming in. There are a lot of good pipeline of cyber startups we are seeing all across the uh, country. Uh, so this interaction and this com this conversation basically could help us to understand uh, how you are approaching the marketing uh, from all of these three dimensions that we can look at. Look at the challenges of uh, marketing the cybersecurity product and also look at uh, how and what kind of best practices they are you have been following so how this uh, particular pandemic that we are all into uh, is changing the way you would like to position your product and you would like to position your other capabilities and probably also help some of the startups who have joined in this particular uh, uh, panel discussion with some kind of a guidance some kind of best practices that we all can uh, try to do so this will be very freewheeling kind of open discussion uh, for all the participants who have joined today uh, so there is a, a, a button there, which is a raise has button. So we want your participation and your contribution as well for this discussion. So if you, in the conversation, there are six, seven uh, larger micro themes that we have been trying to uh, go on this particular conversation. And in between, we'd like to uh, take you uh, on this panel discussion as well. So you can, uh, click that raise hand button and we can get you probably in this panel discussion. You can put your question to any of the panelists or to all of the panelists. And then we'll try to make it sure that this becomes a two-way communication. And that's why this platform, Airmit, that we selected so that we have very good interactive two-way communication, even in a virtual uh, delivery model as well. So uh, to, to, to begin with, uh, uh, I think uh, all of three speakers are the eminent uh, Cybersecurity uh, industry professional and industry leader in the in the country and not here in the, in the country but other parts of the globe as well. So uh, and we shall, we thought like we will have CEOs view of a marketing function that was one of the important things. But we also want to carry this conversation forward to get the CMOs and marketing officials of the startup companies together so that they can learn from each other. Uh, so I'd like to now start the conversation. 
uh, by uh, going to each of you, Rahul, Syed, and Kailar, sir, uh, briefly uh, talking about how you have been evolving your marketing function and what role it is playing. And then probably we, I have some themes in my mind. We will try to carry this conversation based on those themes, basically. So brief comment, the introductory comment from each of you on the marketing function that you have been evolving in your organization. Oh, I can yeah, start with yeah. idea. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll first, I did my bit of branding here for the smoke screen. So I have a fancy new haircut for those of you who don't know. Um, I think it's a very interesting topic. Uh, I, I smoke screen has been a bootstrap company from day one. So the idea of marketing uh, was essentially spend the bare minimum that we could and uh, you know obtain the maximum number of customers that we that we could manage at the same time. We couldn't afford a dedicated marketing function uh, and because uh, the CEO usually gets to do everything that no one else wants to do, that kind of fell to me. I think um, the most crucial part in the early years is, you know, you've got the, the idea of your finding product market fit. Until you have product market fit, it probably doesn't make sense for you to market anything at all. And the definition of product market fit is a bit vague. Uh, it could just be your first customers that say, yes, I like this. I like what you're doing. And that's enough of a cohort that you feel that you now want to go and reach more people. So unless you've defined that cohort in the beginning and you know that there's a group of people who want to buy this, uh, don't spend a dime on it, right? Once you do, uh, the most important thing that you're going to do is you're going to need advocates. You're going to need those first few people to speak for you. The cybersecurity industry is a trust industry. And without trust, you're not going to get anywhere. It doesn't matter who you are, unless there's implicit trust because of your background. So I see a number of startups trying to go and say, I'm going to go talk to the CISO of this bank or that bank. Nobody knows who you are. I'm not going to put you in my network. So advocacy and getting the brand built on the backs of the great work that you did is step one. After that, you start a formal marketing function. Um, we were, funnily enough, we were late to this. Uh, we didn't really think about marketing per se in terms of how we could leverage it. Uh, and what you tend to find is you'll start building your own stories internally, success stories, failure stories. And then what you need to do is you need to focus on actually capturing those stories. And once you capture those stories, the third part is you're going to distribute them. That's the point when, for example, now we have a CF, uh, CMO on board uh, who actually helps me package those stories, distribute them, get them out to the world in general. So until you're at the point where you found the people who want what you have and you've understood what story you're going to tell them, uh, then distribution comes at the end. That's kind of the journey that we've walked and we're sort of at the third stage there. Yeah. Uh Rahul? Hey, hi. Um, so first of all, I am extremely happy to be part of the panel. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Sahir as well as Kailash. So <laughs> happy to be part of the panel. Um, I mean, before I talk about the subject, you know, I, I will we'll go in more of the Q&A mode. Uh, but I'll tell you my experiences and my learnings about, about this, this, this particular field. And at CloudCheck, right? Um, our entire marketing has been based on four other companies, you know, inspired by four other companies. One is Apple, uh, the second is Nike, the third is Red Bull, and the fourth is Ford Motors. And I'll tell you what inspired us and, uh, and of, of all these four companies. If you look at Apple, right? Apple, you would never see Apple talking about their specifications. They'll never say that they have a 100, 1 GB RAM. Uh, they'll never say that they have a megapixel uh, uh, 10 megapixel camera, they would never talk about the specifications of the product. Rather, I mean, if you observe, right, if you travel from Bangalore airport, Bangalore city to Bangalore airport, you would see a large hoarding of Apple, which says, this photograph was shot on iPhone X. That's all. Their marketing is actually highlighting what they can do rather than talking a lot about their functionalities. So Apple is one company which has inspired a lot of us. So I'll talk how we, we take those inspirations down the line. Second company we are inspired by is Nike. Nike is a shoe, shoe brand, right? But if you look at Nike, you would never see Nike doing an advertisement about just the shoes. All their advertisements are about the people, the great athletes that actually has worn those shoes or the great athletes that have done remarkable things in, in, on, on earth. So they always highlight great people and what they've achieved and that's what their branding has always about. The third company is Red Bull, right? 
if you look at red bull they would never i mean it's, it's just an energy drink right but their advertisement is not by giving you a free red bull sample rather they create gaming experiences you know the, the first gaming they created was back in 1999 they created the first uh, what right kite boarding competition okay and people go went there to see those competition and then they got inspired i mean they just like the brand right so what they do is they created hundreds and hundreds of competitions all around the world and why are these competitions people are influenced the point they are trying to and the point the learning from them is uh always think about the customer don't just do something because you have to sell something do it so that you can add value to the customer and the the fourth is ford motors right um, if you look if you go to michigan so there's a ford museum and that museum there's a framed letter of a robber who has written to henry ford and why is this robbers the thief's letter on on in the museum is because this thief was very notorious for robbing many high profile banks and he was able to get away with it because he was really good at driving okay and he used to drive a ford motors now after he was successful in many robberies he wrote an email up a uh, mail mail to henry ford which says how amazing his car was and, and and what a privilege it was for him to drive it right and then henry made it a uh, big hoopla about it and then uh, made a pr out of it so the point is the fourth point which we learn always is make sure the customer feedbacks are amplified right by doing the right pr and it's reaching the right people so uh, these are the four principles which cloudsec or we fundamentally follow while doing our branding uh, we will talk more about it in in in, in the coming you know so we'll talk more about it yes hello uh, vinayak i think you're on mute yeah, so kaila sir you sell into both the enterprise and the consumer segment as well and yes. i'm sure ki uh, most of the discussion uh, happens in the realm of the b2b kind of a uh, uh, marketing but in your case it's a b2c as well so how yeah. had been the marketing function evolving in a retail and how exactly you are approaching as a ceo of a, a yes so can you hear me yeah yeah very well okay uh, first of all uh, i would like to uh, thank you vinayak uh, for uh, giving me opportunity to be part of this your panel discussion and i i, I just i heard uh, sahir as well as rahul and there there was a lot of uh, good insights of their experience in the marketing part of it and um, my my experience is uh, somewhat like sahir only because being a startup company when i started this thing uh, it all starts uh, with you know with a very low budget being a bootstrap company you don't have that big budgets and everything so what i believe is all you know marketing is all about building trust and credibility and it starts with first with your employee itself see when i started this company you know the concept of developing an antivirus software at that time when people used to never pay for software you know making my younger brother you know to believe in me that yes we can do something that itself is for the marketing you know getting a software developers when there were hardly number of people in india and whoever used to get you know graduation and everything they used to run in us and hardly people used to left in pune or like you know in india and selecting those people and making believe in this company that yes we wanted to do something where i don't have that much cash or not of fund uh, no funds also and after developing product selling into this market in indian market where people don't pay for software was a big challenge you know? so building that trust and uh, you know credibility first among uh, the stakeholders of the company and then the customers and understanding the customer is a is a big challenge so it starts with you know setting proper a mission and a vision 
uh, for the company, for the uh, employees, for the stakeholders, and for the uh, keeping uh, customer centric uh, uh, point in uh, mind that you know what actually customer is looking for. Because when it comes to cyber security, it is even though it is a product, but actually it is not a product because uh, because cyber security so products are something which is solving problem of customers. So understanding customer is equally important by just by just creating a product and by just uh, doing marketing uh, and advertisement, product will not get sale because unless and until you don't solve customer problem. Uh, product getting sale is is very difficult. So understanding customer problems and creating solution around those problems and giving uh, a shape to the uh, shape as a product and then uh, taking uh, this product to the market and doing uh, doing the advertisement or whatever it is uh, is uh, was a great learning for me because I was I, I was not at all from a you know, sales and marketing person, I was a technical person and I used to re do repair part of it, not the software development part of it. It is my younger brother who took entire uh, responsibility of product development and everything and uh, understanding the customer part of it and based on that developing the product was a, uh, a great uh, achievement for, of me as well as the entire company. So if I have to talk about the marketing, you know, it started with, you know, the uh, getting all stakeholders on the same page, you know, and building the product and then going to the market and understanding the customer pain point and based on that, uh, changing, the, uh, changing the product uh, to, to the need of the customer and then uh, going back to the market. So initially it was like, uh, we tried to uh, find out a good marketing agency when, when we started generating somewhat good revenue. Then we started uh, thinking of going uh, to the good marketing agency and we found that, you know, their fees and everything were very high. And then we landed up, you know, doing ourselves, you know, as uh, Sahir said, like, you know, we, uh, Sahir and Rahul said about. So after having like, you know, 25 years of experience, I see that uh, the CEO has to be has to be involved into this part of it because it is very important to understand the customer and based on that driving the marketing department that is very very important and i have an experience of like you know uh, consumer security and then sme securities and as well as the enterprise securities so so we cannot in a, 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 we don't have a big market share when it comes to enterprise security, but when it comes to consumer, we have more than 35% market share in India. That itself is the biggest market share when it comes to cyber security in consumer segment. And uh, yes, uh, as as per time, you know, we kept, kept on changing a lot many things and we have uh, tried and explored so many different kinds of uh, reaching out to the customer and building the trust and credibility about the product and services. So there are some uh, additional drivers also by just doing marketing and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, customer pool customer, uh, customers are not going to buy the product because when it comes to cyber security you need other driving factors also you should have a good sales team you should have a good support team you should have a good analysis team because unless and until you don't have a proper product because customer customer is not going to pay only for the uh, for the advertisement part of it. They want a solution unless and until you don't provide a proper solution to the customer. Uh, this advertisement is is the best like, you know, and one more experience. What I wanted to share here is initially I thought that, you know, I will have to spend more on product development and product solution and that will be the major cost of company. But uh, today, I let let me uh, uh, tell you that marketing is equally costly, as good as product development cost. So marketing is not cheap. Marketing is very very costly actually. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, those initial comments, and uh, and I think uh, each of you have probably uh, gone to a different kind of a. Uh, 
stories in terms of how you started like sai talked about the bootstrap but uh, rahul you uh, you probably started but i think i can fairly say at this point of time ki you also got some investment at the early stage of the organization uh, does it really uh, change the way you look at the marketing suppose uh, you get a investment in early stage of uh, uh, working uh, setting up the uh, operations uh, uh, that's to be right yeah yeah okay first of all we didn't we didn't get investments uh, we only got investments after 3 years of running the company so we bootstrap for 3 years made it profitable and that's when we see scale so yeah, yeah. so uh, i mean and, and let me tell you something so in the early days right because when we didn't have a lot of money we always used to focus on how we can better spend the money to get the better returns right one of the places where what we did is in 2017 right it is a conference nalcon is a large conference in southern in india so we, we we had a booth there very small booth what we did is we put a backdrop for the booth we didn't, we, we took the money into creating a brochure okay now this brochure had nothing about what we do as a company or nothing about the product our product by the way what we did is we created the brochure in the form of a hackers cheat sheet because this nalcon is a cyber security hackers conference so the brochure had every information which is it's like a cheat book a cheat book which is required for hackers to do their day to day operations you know it's like yeah if you do these these things you get this results okay so the entire brochure was just about giving a value to people who are coming to that conference had nothing about our product and guess what we had a large queue people just waiting to collect our brochures of course it had our logo and i'll share this uh, brochure with you guys you know as a reference on on, on the chat but the, but this is what i said inspired by nike i mean inspired by providing value right providing value to the customers don't talk about the product rather think how much value you can give back to the customers by like selling you know after the product or even before selling the product right what can you do so that they'll remember you and it's useful for them throughout the journey is one thing which we did again so now think about it right spending all the backdrop cost on a brochure which is nothing about your product but it's just something valuable for the customers but we finished off the brochure within a day we didn't have the brochure for the next day people are collecting more than one did you even give it distribute it to all their friends and you know colleagues etc etc so uh, so 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 that's one thing another thing if you look at 2019 again now to on right the conference we our backdrop had just one customer i mean uh, and another who uses our product by the way his photograph and a quote from him i mean he's a typical normal user he's not a ceo he was not the director of the company nothing is a typical user of the product he is a guy who uses it every day our entire backdrop 55% of the backdrop was his photograph okay this is how we honor the people who is doing great to the community because it, it's not just because of our product but because of his hard work that's why all the cyber security improvements are happening right so our job is to honor them and guess what people loved it right so again this testing again costs a lot of money it's just it's just i guess having a core principle which you follow uh, in order to get the optimal results and people will remember these things right people will remember faces people will remember what the company was telling etc etc um um yeah yeah so 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 that's what i mean so we have bootstrap we always are very conscious and and always the focus is what is the value we are providing to our customer even when we put up social media posts right the guy who runs the social media has to you know tell okay what value will the customer get if i put this post yeah, yeah. so that's so what, that's I, so sai i think uh, uh, so now how do the ca mode if you are know, saying that the ca mode function is now uh, in a way set up and there is a story with the kill as well so uh, how means in terms of now uh, reaching to the level of us having a proper marketing function which is led by a chief marketing officer kind of uh, person and there is a too much of competition in terms of getting those people right and those skills as well so how about uh, getting a real good competent people uh, uh, in the organization which is uh, which is been known as a startup company and that to a deep technology startup but deception is not something that people uh, knows and understand in a day to day life actually 
So is it really easy for you to find good people and get them onboarded? Uh, so on what tricks basically you really played in terms of getting good market talent in the marketing position? I think that's a great question, Vinayak. Um, in the early days, and I'm, I'm going to try to, you know, every time I speak, I'm going to try to give something to the audience which you can do tomorrow, right? It depends what level you're at. The first 10 people that you're going to have in your company just need to be infected by the idea. Um, you have to get comfortable with the idea that over time as you scale, uh, you're not a family, you're a professional sports team. A professional sports team means at each you know season, you have the best people on board, right? Which means step one is realize that the people you start with may not always be the people in those functions as you grow. And that's perfectly normal. A lot of people get hung up you know, emotionally on the fact that, oh, like, for example, I used to handle marketing. I have nothing to do with practically with marketing now, right? Uh, so step one is that the first 10 people are infected with the idea. They'll work 20 hour days uh, you know, to just try to figure it out. Right? After you reach a certain level, how do you get people excited? There's a few hacks which you can use. The first is, you know, Rahul has been speaking very, very, uh, very well about brand. And in unfortunately, we don't invest in brand. And CloudSec has, in, uh, you know, not even invested, but emotionally uh, decided on brand uh, because brand is not immediately measurable. You can't pay off brand in terms of lead gen, right? So you think about brand, brand gives you, it's like an investment in the future, right? At some point, it's going to pay off. Uh, we invested somewhat in brand and a bit more maybe in lead generation. So tactically being able to say, okay, we're going to do an event and we're going to have a target of getting 70 leads out of this event. Now, what happened was we decided if we want to attract the best talent, we have to be seen playing on the, the same stage. So Smokescene used to do a lot of events. And what we did uh, was we actually, and in fact, I, I saw uh, Mandar uh, on this call, Mandar Patil. Uh, he was the one who told me, uh, let's do Gartna. Now, Gartner, you ask most startups, it's like the Gartner SRM event is really expensive. Um, it's probably 7 to 10x, uh, you know, what you'd pay for a normal event. Uh, and we said, okay, we're only going to do two events. We do DSCI ASS, by the way, every single year. And if you don't do DSCI ASS, you're not marketing in cybersecurity. And Vinayak did not tell me to say that. I, I fully believe it. Uh, the second event which I do is... Uh, is Gartner. And the reason was the first time Smokesy showed up in Gartner, everyone was like, wow, this small startup is now suddenly playing with the big boys. You've got Checkpoint here, you've got Fire here, you've got Smokesy in the middle. Uh, you suddenly start seeing a bunch of new CVs. You start seeing not freshers who want to join you, but you start seeing industry professionals who are country heads of companies saying, hey, I really like what these guys are talking about. They're on the way up. Let's join them. And then after a certain point, hopefully you have some money. So, uh, so I've tried to say for stage one, how you do it for cheap. Stage two, how you can hack it, so you make the brand bigger than it is. Um, and stage three, which is what we did now is, uh, for those of you who have some money, uh, I work with um, executive search firms. I work with a company called Corn Ferry. Uh, they're very expensive, really expensive, eye-wateringly expensive, but they're not just like your regular recruitment firm. Corn Ferry goes the extra mile to find me the best talent in the world. And someone once asked me, uh, why are you paying you know, 3x, 4x of what you probably pay a normal recruiter to Corn Ferry? The point is, if I can get the right person and if they stay with me for a couple of years, three years, whatever it is, I have more than paid off on that investment. Getting the wrong person, it's three months of figuring out that, okay, they're getting on board. Six months that you probably need to figure out, um, you know, whether they're doing well and three months to kind of exit them if it's not working out. I mean, you know, kind of work through it. So that means you've lost a year on the wrong person. So now I use um, search firms, Con Ferry, Michael Page uh, to find people. Uh, but you still have to, again, you have to have something for that person. It's not just money. You can pay a huge amount of money to a top marketing or salesperson. Uh, they have to believe in what you're doing. And the only way they'll believe in what you're doing is if you have a genuine vision. And that word vision is used so loosely. I think most companies don't have a vision. They don't know where they want to be in you know X number of years, and they can't articulate it. For us, it's very clear. We can articulate what we want to be in X amount of time. Once you can do that, then people get on board. So that's what we did there. So tactically, I would say um, yeah. to, to give it a tip, if you're sort of early stage, find those 10 people. If you don't have them, find them. If you're mid stage, uh, do things. Uh, people talk a lot about Gartner. Gartner is free. I guess every person on this call wants to be featured in a Gartner report. I've been featured in six to eight Gartner reports. It doesn't cost you any money. You can go right now uh, after this call. There's no excuse for not doing it. Go Google Gartner vendor briefing, find the right analyst, go right to them and, and you can talk to the analysts for one hour absolutely for free every single quarter. And if you're not doing that, 
uh, this webinar is already worth the price for you. Go do that immediately. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, and the follow-up question is, uh, as Kailar has also talked uh, some time back, was like, one is the investing on creating and having your own marketing function, and other is also hiring those services, basically. As well. So, uh, my question, and I, I'll come to Rahul as well. My question is, keep, uh, uh, you really take a, uh, services of external agencies, uh, uh, so I know okay, for design, for day-to-day -day campaign, you may take it, but sometimes some people may take a services for the your strategic plan for the marketing. As well. so I just want to understand, uh, then I'll come to put up on this part. Apart from building your own team, how do you uh, engage with the external service for uh, Which area basically you uh, work with the external service for? Uh, was that me? Yeah, so I'll, with you, then I'll come to Rahul. Uh, so external, to be honest, I've not had the best success with external. Um, we've done tactical things. My general feeling on outsourcing is if it's not your core function, you outsource it and manage it. Uh, but when it comes to marketing, we're still at the point that we're pretty much in-house. We are now looking at an agency to help us. Actually, we do have an agency for distribution. So a rule of thumb, which I didn't know, was you spend, you know, if you have 100 bucks, you spend 20 towards uh, content creation, that means finding your stories, packaging it, etc. And you spend 80 to distribution. And this fell backwards to me because I wanted to create these brilliant stories. But if you create those brilliant stories and no one sees them, it's useless. So now we spend um, a lot of money towards distributing, uh, like if we have a great story on work from home, some thread we saw on our Honeypot network, uh, that will be distributed uh, widely and you have to pay it for that. So now we work with external agencies for syndicated content, for PR, uh, placement. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. A lot of people do Google Ads. I have never succeeded at Google Ads. If someone knows how to do it, please tell me. Uh, but that's the sort of stuff which we do externally. Yeah. So Rahul, uh, uh, so, uh, so one is definitely on uh, your marketing function and how you are evolving. And is there somebody who is dedicatedly looking at marketing or you? technical team or you take care of that that's one and second part is what kind of services that you hire uh, uh, to for your marketing function well I, I have a very different view i mean see by the way gardner is a necessary evil that's what i always tell i personally am not a big fan uh, because yeah, actually i mean the money any any startup even we have to spend by the way uh, is typically ranging from 19 lakhs to 20 lakhs you know just to get a gardener well, I mean, what do I say? The, the, the services from them. Or for example, you take Google advertisements, right? You have to pay a large corporation a couple of thousand dollars to get some sort of return, right? We don't, we don't, CloudSec does not run Google advertisements. CloudSec does not run Facebook ads at this point of time. What we do is we use that money to do something else. I'll tell you one of the programs we run. We, we call it Earn While You Learn program. We pick students from their third year of engineering Okay, we bring them on board for a six month internship. Sorry, second year of engineering. We pick them for second year of engineering. We bring them on for a six month internship. And then we send them back to college and they can work with us and they get paid 25,000 per month till they complete their engineering. Okay, this costs CloudSec almost, uh, um, uh, almost uh, uh, 4.5 lakhs in, in two years, by the way. Okay, now, but what are we doing? We are actually trying to improve the, the what do I say, the, the learning and experience of a student who would have never had the opportunity. And we are also turning the burden off of their home loan and financial loan from him by giving him that stipend, right? Again, he doesn't have to join us after four years. He can go wherever he wants. But the point I'm trying to make is this money we could have given to Google, but we are giving it to these students, right? And this is actually creating a bit of hype. Okay, we, of course we advertise about this good day wherever we can, right? Like, like right now I'm doing. But the point is, rather than giving money to large corporates, I personally believe that we should distribute it into, uh, you know, scenarios like these and create good stories out of it and make that as a PR opportunity. Because in the end, customers don't buy because you have a great product. Customers like because Sahir is a good person. And correct me if I'm wrong. Customers buy from a person, not from a large corporate. Customers buy from a good salesperson who's good to them. Customers also 
if if you can make customers part of the story, the larger story which you are trying to achieve, like size and then the larger vision. If they can if you can make them part of your vision, then the sales is happening, right? So this is the method we follow. So a lot of our marketing budget we don't send to big third party organizations. We try to distribute in the way I just just mentioned right now. So. Uh, this is an interesting uh, point that you uh, 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 really brought up. So, uh, so, so marketing is uh, also for the you may thought about an activity and you want to really market that activity. Yeah. You are going somewhere, or you probably may do marketing for a product, or you may do marketing for a organization. But uh, I think the individual also matters. Right? So, uh, and then. People knowing about that individual who is running that organization also very important. So, uh, uh, so is it is it happen naturally or there is some cautious effort that you put in terms of um, elevating the role of the individual for running, for running this organization? Uh, this cautious effort that is going into. It. It's more of a cautious effort, right? Like it, you know, I mean, it's very difficult to keep them aside and do your business. Like I said, we still do pay a little bit in wherever we have to pay. Uh, it's a necessary evil, but very, very conscious efforts we do internally to make sure that the money is going to people who needs it the most and create stories out of it. And again, I mean, it works for every company, right? Look at it. You're actually doing a social good and the byproduct of it is actually building your brand. And in the end, when you go to sleep, it makes you feel better. So, Sai, um, this question about image, focusing on the image of individual uh, and the role it plays in uh, running the organization or positioning organization. Can you just develop on this? What had been your experience? So, I'm actually, uh, those who know me, I'm actually a very introverted, shy person. I'm not the type of person who likes to be out there and, um, you know, be all over the place. Um, by force, I've had to do it, right? And uh, you get comfortable with it. Um, I think it's a very important stage for to have spokespeople is really important. I have Sudarshan in my team who, when he goes to you know places where there are red teamers, people come and click photos with him. I've got other folks who are ambassadors of the brand, um, definitely. Uh, however, my thinking has changed over this slightly over time. While it's important to have a spokesperson, the identification. Uh, at some level of scale has to be with the organization, not the individual. I, I will know that I have been truly successful at branding the day um, people know Smokescreen and don't know Sahir. Uh, of course, on that journey, you know, you have to put a face to the company or multiple faces to the company. And I think the, the brand image that your employees carry is really, really crucial. So every single person who kind of has that Smokescreen hoodie and goes out there, they say, oh, you're a Smokescreen guy. You know, they're carrying my brand in whichever small way. So it is very important, and I think Rahul said it rightly, you have to develop downstream. It's very important. I don't necessarily see that, um, you know, your, your marketing dollars are there for a reason. And in fact, on Gartner, there's a lot. I, I, I also believe I call Gartner attacks, right? Uh, but there's something that I discovered about Gartner, uh, which I didn't know. And I'm not a paid chill for Gartner, despite what you may think. Um, I actually don't do any marketing really with Gartner outside of the SRM. I subscribe to Gartner now because we have money for what they call the tech CEO framework. They help me with positioning. They do content teardowns. Uh, they do um, sales compensation plans. Uh, they do uh, product roadmap evaluation. Everybody thinks Gartner is about influencing an analyst. I'm telling you, and, and fight me on this, you can't pay your way into a report. You can pay your way to talk to an analyst. It's very different. If you've got nothing useful to say and you don't have anything good, they're not putting you in any report, no matter how much money you pay them. However, paying them money to get insight onto your business, uh, it's useful to me. Like I, I find it very useful. I don't know anything about the current median mean price on endpoint security in the European market. I can make one phone call and I can find out. So you, you pay them for that. Um, and you don't have to, my point was you don't actually have to pay a lot of money to outsiders uh, if you want to do stuff. And, and ads is actually cheap. You can try it. You can see whether it works. Like someone told me this about ads. I think it was Vivek Ramchandran of uh, Contester Academy. He was like, at least ads are intent-based search. Someone is looking for something. So say someone's Googling deception technology. Why should they not see me, right? Why should they not see my company's name? 
that probably costs you nothing. It could probably cost you like 10,000 bucks a month. And the off chance that maybe one person in a month sees it, it should be okay. So I, that's, that's my approach. I'm very relentlessly focused about lead generation. Uh, I think it's important. I think startups, especially bootstrap companies, die when they don't have pipeline. That's the only thing you need. If you have enough people who want to buy from you today in the future and you can keep filling that pipe, you then solve for a sales distribution engine you know, later and hopefully earlier rather than later. But if you can solve for that and there's inflow of people who want to buy, this is insight, this is gold. And if you're not getting this, if you don't have that inbound flow of people, none of this will matter. A great product. You can take a B minus product to market in the cybersecurity industry with a great GTM and you can win. There's been enough instances of this. Does anyone remember a company called Dambala? They did APT threat detection, in my opinion, much better than FireEye, but FireEye destroyed them, right? There's enough instances of B minus products winning in cybersecurity because of good go to market. It may suck, but I'm in the business of increasing shareholder value. I have to do it to succeed. Yeah, so there is a very interesting question uh, uh, related to when to when to start marketing. And uh, that question talks about the, uh, in the in the life cycle of the product development, uh, there's a time that you have been developing product and uh, um, you are taking that product to the market. So when exactly uh, that we should be starting the marketing effort? Right? And this is a very important question because there are a lot of new startups coming in and we are seeing almost every month six, seven new startups and is coming in. So when should they think in the life cycle coming to market about them? Is this Rahul or me? Um, huh, so you can start and then come to. Uh, okay. Um, in terms of when, I think the first thing is when you've identified that group of people for who, who you can make very happy and you know there's a larger group. So for example, take for example, uh, smoke screen as an example. We, we found that we could solve for problems that uh, large tier banks, tier one banks had. So once we had three, four of them maybe, that's when we started trying to market to the remaining, you know, whatever, 10, 20, 50, et cetera. So until you have that cohort of people for who you solve a problem and work really closely to find that problem solution that they say, not just what you wanted to build, but what you want, what they want. And we use a principle called design thinking in Smokestream. If you look it up, it's a way of actually building and innovating. So we worked on that. Once we had that cohort, uh, we then said, who else fits that uh, that kind of market? And they do it. There's a, there's a good story, I think, about eBay. Initially, eBay couldn't find any customers. And I might be remembering the story slightly wrong. So they focused on people who wanted to trade Beanie Baby soft toys. Okay because that was a relentless market that wanted to trade these soft toys. And so the initial cohort was, how do you very easily trade and buy Beanie Babies from each other? And then from that, once they solved the problem for Beanie Babies, they extrapolated it to an auction house and a marketplace. Um, I think you have to kind of do the same thing. If you don't know who you're selling to, and they're not saying that they're very happy, uh, you probably shouldn't be spending time and money trying to find more people of the same category. So Raul, uh, yeah. When your product got launched, uh, yeah. so this is very special. So, how much early you started the marketing or was after the product got launched? Yeah, I mean, see, by the way, like Sahid mentioned previously, right? Sahid has given a couple of tips on how you can do marketing with very little budget, right? He has figured out a few hacks that you can use to actually do marketing easily. So, from my perspective, we actually did our marketing from the very beginning itself because, see, remember, you might not really market your product in the initial stage because you don't have a product yet, but you still have to market your company, right? You are marketing your company. Why are you marketing your company? Because you need to have good people in your company, right? So you start for marketing in the perspective so that, yeah, your brand name is going to be visible. Maybe a bunch of people will join you, good, great people will join you, and they'll start telling, or they'll at least go start telling about your company to other people. Uh, and then it goes, the word will spread out. So from the very beginning itself, we have started our marketing, even when we didn't have a product, you know, but then again, it was not the product which we are marketing. We are marketing our culture, the team, the technology we are building, uh, and the good things we are trying to achieve. So we all start, started all this from the very beginning itself. And gradually, you start, okay, you start with talking about the people you have. Okay, now great people will join you. Now when great people have joined you, you have built great product. Now that you have built a great product, now you start telling the people about the things you have built or the way you have built things or the way you're trying to approach the problem. Now, people who are interested in that product will now join you, right? Will join your business. 
Now the people who are interested in have joined. Now you take their opinions, their feedback, and then you market out of that. Now more people who are in the similar sector will start joining you. So yeah. I mean, the point is it's a chain. You have to start from the very beginning, but at different stages you have to market different different things. Uh, yeah. you, you you can't again even if you are working for a company. I would personally request that you should look at the larger picture than just trying to achieve your particular goal, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I think at Cloudflare we appreciate that a lot more than you know just doing your job so that you solely market this particular thing at this particular point of time. So always think for the longer picture and then try to achieve it gradually is what I think. So there is an interesting question again, uh, and I think this question I would like to to Sahil to take this question. Yeah. This is about somebody is in a marketing team, and uh, uh, because the Hello. companies are to various different stages, and yes. there is the priorities of in terms of investing where yes, much you will yes. be investing. That's marketing may not the prior may not be the priority. So, uh, and there are many other areas where probably you are burning a uh, lot of funds, and then marketing gets the second precedence basically. So in that case, no, sorry, I'm not interested. Thank if you. there are Say for example, hundreds of marketing officials of a startup companies are in this particular panel. What will you guide them so so that they can better approach to CEOs uh, uh, and founders of the organization, get a little bit more commitment. Uh, so uh, in your case, you must be also dealing with the situation where marketing teams are approaching you to get more commitment. So what you like to see from the marketing team so that you committed more to the market. I think uh, there's there's um, I borrow a framework from I think Cisco uses this strategy, uh, sorry vision, strategy, execution, and metrics. So your your vision hopefully doesn't change. So maybe the vision is that we're going to be the most well-known targeted threat detection solution in two years, right? Your strategy is how you're going to do that. So maybe your strategy is content marketing, inside sales, uh, partner enablement, and something, right? Your execution and your metrics is where the devil is in the details. We work on a system we adopted from Intel called OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. It was the singularly greatest um, and most powerful thing that I, I probably ever did. If, if, if I drop dead tomorrow, it's the one thing I hope they write on my gravestone that's how I did this from a management perspective. It aligns the company and it talks about having things that are measurable. It's very easy to spend money on things and not know where it went. I used to spend a lot of money on events and never really look at how many leads came out of it. How do you track? Do you have a way in your CRM to think about the fact that you met that CISO at an event eight months ago and you sold to him like now? Are you able to bridge that gap? Because you might have met him three times in the middle. So what I look for from the marketing function is very clear metrics on, on what does success look like. It can be completely wrong. Like right now we're running an experiment where we're running a few few initiatives. We have no idea. I mean, my marketing person said, finger in the wind, I don't know. But we're going to put a number on it. If I go, say, take DSCI, right? Uh, when we did AISS in December of, uh, Q4, 20, uh, Q3, 2019, uh, we went there. We were launching our new product, Fault Line. And the usual thing was, OK, let's put up the booth. Let's put up the banners, the standees. And I said, OK, how many leads are we going to come back with for Fault Line? And everyone's like clueless. They're like, okay, we don't know. Then you start thinking, you're like, okay, AISS has how many delegates? They'll all see us. How many already know us? Existing customer base versus blah, blah, blah. We came back with finally saying we're going to come back with uh, 60 leads, I think we said. 60 leads for fault night prospects. We came back with 72 or something. So it, it went well, right? The event went well for us. But if you measure, what if I come back with 40? 40 good or is 40 bad? So whenever somebody comes to me with any initiative, I want to know what does success look like. And I want that measurable by quantity and quality, right? So I don't just actually want to say 60 leads. I want to say 60 leads, and now I will measure out of those 60 leads, how many of those closed in three months. So I have both measures uh, there. And we're a very, very, we're a company of engineers. We're relentlessly data driven uh, when it comes to stuff like this. Sometimes you go wrong, but for the most part, it gives you some basis for decision making, metrics in everything. So um, uh, there is one question, and I think it gives. Uh, both of you the opportunity of talking about your product uh, which talks about if we could understand what you are saying uh, if you let us know about your product so this is opportunity 
at least briefly you talk about the both of you talk about your product what you do uh, i think there are a couple of comments i have seen we, we at least need to understand what they sell i thought they must be knowing about you but probably this is opportunity so we both suck at marketing obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true man true. we need to <laughs> put more money now so i'll yeah. let the whole elevator pitch first yeah sure yeah. so we we call ourselves a digital risk monitoring company what we do is we monitor every external risk right one of the things i'll tell you what happens in india is scammers are putting up fake customer care numbers all throughout the internet okay so when you go to google or you go to just try and search for hkfc banks customer care number or google based customer care number what comes up is the fake customer care numbers okay and then you accidentally call them and you get scammed okay so this is an external threat the organization does not have enough the technology at this point and want of time to monitor these things and rectify this is what cloud shift does our, our technology monitors the internet identifies any scams or threats or data leakages that has happened and proactively take them down so that your brand is much more safer and your customers are much more safer this is what we do in a nutshell yeah the side briefly we oh, give a good pitch right so <laughs> I, i don't have my elevator pitch game good right okay here's what we do uh, very briefly so basically um, there's many ways you can solve for detecting threats in your network uh, we believe that the biggest problem in security is not solving for threat detection it's actually solving for complexity you can go get an edr you can go get a network threat analytics tool uva blah 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 so many things the biggest problem is complexity so what we developed is deception technology is honeypots rebooted but that's incidental that's how we do it what we do and why we do it is we make targeted threat detection very simple for you if you have a lean security team you're sick of your false positives and you are worried that you're going to get hit by a serious bad guy so 20% of the threats that cause 80% of the damage my technology goes in your network it covers and detects stuff at the places that it that need to be doesn't need to be all over the place you can implement it in days rather than weeks months and years and you can see success very quickly so where is solution for complexity when it comes to detecting threats that's really think, nice sai i think you got a lot of digital claps for this <laughs> Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that was, I thought there was something weird with the. No, no. So the the audience they are they are continuously sending their sentiments through the claps and thumbs ups. Yeah. So this is me. me. Uh, now, now one or two level up question and then I will request audience to raise your and come on the stage and talk to the panelist ask your question basically only one or two questions i would like so now this is largely we discuss about what you do but now markets are different right so uh, uh, there are global market there is a sectoral market basically uh, the bfs sector is very aggressive but some other sectors may not be that aggressive or it, it may be easy in india but uh, sometimes cost is a very significant factor in uh, us or you also try to go to the middle east market so can you both of you talked about sectoral uh, approach to the work that you do in the marketing and the geographical uh, intervention that we do for um so uh, in terms of geographic geographies yeah so it is my home uh, home market i have a 95% plus market share here uh, the core geographies for me are now us and i have a number of customers in the gcc region um and now the us has been we started our us operations last year our segmentation is uh, we've got two people we've got the security 1%ers these are the guys who have all the money in the world for security solutions and we have something for them but really the part that excites me is what i call mid market uh, this is the people the law firm who doesn't have any security guy but he carries all the risk because he's doing mergers and acquisitions so what we do really well is mid size enterprise who really wants to take their threat detection game to the next level uh, we give them a simple solution that they can actually uh, deploy and use very easily uh, that's our segmentation and then globally we have a partner strategies we have a number of really good managed security services providers who take our technology to market as a service uh, and then we do some oem work as well so that our technology you know embedded in something else so these are our core channels rahul can you briefly talk about the uh, geographical uh, approach to the marketing and we have one hand only raised so we'll bring uh, sakesh on a, a stage 
Sure, sure. I mean, uh, so we, we, at this point of time, we are, the solution which we operate, we are Southeast Asia's leaders. We don't have any competition in this space. So this market is primarily, I mean, we are slowly taking over, I would say. Uh, in terms of revenue, 60% uh, of our revenue comes from India and uh, for this region. The 40% actually comes from the US uh, and Middle East at this point of time. Uh, I, I hope that answers. Yeah, but do you do anything yeah. specific uh, in those geographies for marketing or you largely doing oh yeah yeah okay okay sure sure um so the the one of the things we do at this point of time is we i mean our, our, our outreaches right um it's very interesting um uh, every company in the world uh, after the gdpr thing came is supposed to set up a incident response system uh, incident response system is that you know they have to have an email handle which accepts security incidents okay and and, and every company is supposed to have that and every company has it. you go to their web, website and you go to privacy page there's, there's an email and there's a way to accept responses one of the things we do is we monitor the internet right and tell whether anything which belongs to our customer has been leaked or a scam is happening etc so we know what is happening so one of the way we outreach is we always give them some value of what has happened and we give it out to them free of cost, okay, using this methodology, and 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 that's how we uh, do the outreach thing. So we never outreach saying that hey, this is a great product. And we always outreach with something valuable, which is a free report of what we have observed about them. Uh, so that's what we follow. Great. Uh, can I do want me to bring the question? Yeah. So can you? Online? Okay. okay. Hey, hey guys. Hi, Satish. Hi, Satish. We can Hi. hear you. Uh, first of all, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for arranging. This is a great uh, webinar. And thanks, Rahul and uh, Sai. It was a wonderful. So, I have a question. Uh, how much of a relational marketing have you seen in the cyber security? So, when I say relational marketing is leveraging your secondary tertiary network, right? Partners' connections, vendor connections, uh, customers' connections. Uh, in a really outbound fashion, because I have seen a lot of people are not really have the visibility of their really true extended network. So, uh, is there any way have you used uh, that network to extend for a really marketing purpose? Uh, I can take this. Yes, we do this very often. I I make it a point when I do a quarterly meetup with any of my customers to start with. Uh, I, I ask them every single time, are there three people you can connect me with uh, who are useful to my business? Those three people don't need to be uh, prospects. Because for example, they could connect me to a really rock star sales guy at another OEM who I might want to hire. Uh, they may connect me to somebody who's doing something completely different, right? So every single time I try to leverage. So if you've got hundreds of customers and you ask, you know, and insist on getting three names, and I, I never let them go, I will make them give me three names. Then you know, you've got a really good base to go from. That's sure. one. Um, so, so kind of, I, I guess someone would call that referral marketing. I don't know, right? There's probably a term for it. Uh, the other way we do it is, um, you know, when we, we, we use LinkedIn a lot, at least I use LinkedIn a lot, uh, I try to see who's, you know, who's got an interesting conversation and are they connected yeah. to someone. So if I want to, for example, connect tomorrow with maybe the largest MSSP in Japan, I'm going to sure. mine LinkedIn. I'm going to find out there's, there's six degrees of separation. Someone I know was someone there. Sure. And a great example, like uh, I wanted to connect with NTT, right? Uh -huh. Shomaran Das Gupta, a lot of you would know Tom, right, from Net Monastery. Uh, Shom is very close to uh, Sharad Sanghi, uh, who sold NetMagic to NTT. And Shom put me in touch with Sharad. So, yeah, picking up the phone and calling people. I call Rahul relentlessly. Uh, or up relentlessly connected, this guy connected with that guy. So yeah, I, I think as a CEO function, you have to do it. Have we done it organization, institutionalized? Probably not. But we could. It's a good so, idea. Okay. How about you, Rahul? What's your experience with the relational yeah. market? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I completely are uh, in favor of it. In fact, Sahir himself has given us three deals in last year. Okay, I didn't get my commission. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's all it's all put in a bucket. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, the, so the thing is, yeah, it's, I mean, I value a lot. And in fact, being close to 
all the other entrepreneurs or all the partners who are not competing obviously but in a in the similar space is very much important because when something comes up always right they will remember you so making sure they are in in the portion of their memory is very important so you know whatever it helps whether it's linkedin like sai center whatever it's very important that your friends your colleagues your partners always remembers you and has a place in in their memory from there it's very important So, and I have a slight point on this, which is really important, and I think Rahul and 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 Vinay can back me on this. There is now a cybersecurity products and services ecosystem. There are multiple entrepreneurs who have reached some level of success, and there is I would like to call us like a budding budding nexus and cartel. So we help each other with everything outside of marketing. We help with oh, I need an end user license agreement. I need a distributor in Dubai. Um, you know i need an inside sales function i called rahul recently he's been doing a great job on inside sales and content yeah. marketing i called to learn from him so definitely i guess a lot of folks on the call are our ceos we're all reinventing the wheel because earlier there was no real industry uh, sure. now there are there is a number of people who can help so sure. uh, we should all kind of help each other with that you know as much sure. as i I'm, i'll leave my email in the chat if there's anybody else i can help please write sure, sure. and Thank you so much, Sahir. Sure. Sure. Uh, we have another question from Preeti, and she says that, as rightly said by the panelists, security is more about solutions. So mostly companies in cyber security industry they are operating in B two B scenario, which has longer product development time, takes longer to go to market, and takes more time to build the trust. What does the panel think about the right time when you start marketing function overall? I think Rahul answered a better way than me when he said, "Start at the beginning. You know, build the brand from day one because you're not marketing to, to customers. You're marketing to investors. You're marketing to people who will join you, employees. So if you view marketing from the definition of brand building, I think he's absolutely right. You build the brand from day one, and you work on that as skinny as you can. I think the the idea of marketing from the perspective of measurable ROI marketing." um you, you start when you have got product market fit and you have hopefully some semblance of a repeatable sales process if every single time you're going to a customer you're creating a snowflake product and customizing everything and each product is different it's not the same code base being deployed in each place you're probably not ready that's one and point two uh, if you don't have a repeatable sales process which means the founder has to be on every call to kind of convince the customer um then you're probably not ready either and those are the back end pieces if you've got the product market fit and you've got the basic sales engine then you start developing uh lead and the great thing is if you follow rahul's principle of building the brand from day one everyone already should know you so now you just have to bring them in to buy from you absolutely yeah. and to add to that point right i mean the, the, the question was very important because she she or she mentions about uh, trust in that particular thing and i often tell this uh, right uh, all the iconic brands you see are built on base of trust and i'll i'll give you a quick example by the way and you don't have to answer us tata or lions what what would you choose i mean and and now you have an answer right now and why did you choose that answer right all of you would mostly choose one answer i know that and i'm going to tell you which answer but there is a reason why you choose that because you trust something in that organization or some somebody in that organization right so great brands are always built on top of trust and the trust can be positioned by projecting a person uh, or a group of people or a board etc etc different people have different strategies and when once you establish the trust cyber security cyber security solutioning is actually also about selling a trust you are actually telling that you have the solution will Do something for you, irrespective of whether we can't give them 100 percent or not. But uh, the trust is super, super important, and and in building that is very, very uh, important. And there are different strategies of building it, but yeah, very interesting question. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm sure you are you able to hear me? Yes, Vinay. Now yeah. we can hear you. So um, I think there is definitely one set of question on COVID we want to take, but before that, I want to ask both of you: Is the Is there people now talking about more sustainability as a one of the core feature of the way you run the private companies, right? For example, 
there are a lot of value based uh, uh, marketing that people uh, bring those concepts so rather you definitely are creating commercial value for you and your uh, team but you also create a value for the larger purpose uh, and uh, most of the consumer brands really talk about the larger value creation and uh, purpose that you have been talking about and sometimes uh, the attribute of the organization they focus more on this part so uh, may have you reached to that level or uh, are you have been very cautious about uh, the value you have been driving and the larger purpose that so what that figure into the, the discussion uh, or the plan that you make for marketing so yes it does i think we never thought of it as marketing but for example we support um open source projects that we build on top of uh, i think a lot of them like a lot of them are really good projects but they have one guy who's working on it in his free time and i'm making money off the fact that he does that so we support uh, a number of open source projects in whatever way that we can sometimes it's even just visibility uh, but there are different ways um in this covid crisis i mean we've really done what everyone else has done we're giving uh, the product free to essential services uh, so that's something we're doing it, it we you know on our website we also do some initiatives which are around um, you know we plant a tree so x percent of revenue actually goes to planting trees uh, these are larger themes i think they're more driven by often areas that founders are passionate about you know like i'm very passionate about open source so that's why we do it we don't do it with any expectation of uh, reward uh, in any way yeah okay um, Raul? i mean so yeah yeah so so um th this is this interesting concept which we tried and i i can speak about it uh, this was introduced by my colleague saurabh sir uh, in the last diwali he had he had this interesting idea right and every diwali customers uh, sorry vendors actually gift their customers something some goodies or some some interesting things right and you are saying that you know why would we do that why not we sponsor the education of one student okay one student and then we bring a certificate handwritten by the student and and give it back to the client and we tried that we we sponsored the education of 25 students and then the, and the student actually drew a handwritten certificate you know saying thank you to the six of so and so organization uh and, and then we distributed it in fact a lot of people actually I, I mean, all of them actually loved it because it's it's, it's more heart touching and uh, uh and, and some of them were even keeping that behind their uh on their on their desk right and so that everyone can see that what, what they were done so uh so so we do a lot of these activities like like this and in a way we, we think like you know whatever we can do we can contribute back to the society and of course we we do benefit out of that it's not that you know we're doing it purely because yeah, we we great people do we do market that activities in a way as well but again it's about value it's about doing something good and then getting something out of it sort of yeah so uh, both of you talked about uh, experience uh, going to vendors and different ideas and tactics that you really use for uh, 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 attending the on ground events and engaging in f2f and uh, the larger personal one to one kind of connect uh, there are two three questions on a digital marketing and social media advertisement you briefly talk about it but what had been your experience using digital channel and uh, which channel and you find it the most useful in terms of reaching out to the larger customer and uh, what are those tactics that you use uh, and digital channel and digital properties is one important thing but the content marketing who just thinks so for example some of uh, one of the startup which in the reached out to me in the articulation of a product to the current context now context is a uh, largely the data data privacy so how do you articulate the content con your product the what is happening currently so there are two things i'm asking basically the content positioning and the use of uh, digital properties for um i think there are two things i i actually when i went to hire a cmo uh my scorecard of what i wanted was somebody who came from a saas background uh with lots of experience in digital marketing saas businesses i finally hired someone with absolutely no experience in digital well not no experience that's wrong uh, but certainly not saas background in digital as focus because she changed my mind about digital being one channel which i also posted in the chat um you know when you look at marketing you tend to be myopic and especially as technologies digital is the natural flow to us we often think it's the cheapest medium it's not uh, we often think that it's the best medium it can be 
But even within digital, there are so many channels. Uh, everybody talks about content marketing. Um, it's a really interesting one. Very often they try two approaches. One is they try to create content internally and then they find that it doesn't really happen on a regular basis. Like you want your engineers to tell the great stories of how they wrote great code, but you can't consistently get them to do it, right? The second is they try to comment on what else is happening. So you see this, they piggyback. Mandate report is out there. So let's piggyback on the mandate report and say something and be part of the conversation as the digital marketing guys like to say. And, and guys, you know, sometimes I catch my guys doing this as well. I'm like, guys, this is total crap, right? You're just trying to be part of a conversation. Do you really have anything to say? And then people say, how do we find what you have to say? So the greatest thing that I just discovered is look at your own data. Look at your own data and tell stories from your own data. For example, we have maybe 5,000 plus honeypots around the globe telling us stuff. So now what we do is every month we put out um, like what we're seeing. We've seen a 25% increase on perimeter attacks, increase on Citrix VPNs, Pulse Secure VPNs. We've seen, you know, this is just last month, uh, the increasing use of Golang and this all data we have internally. And now we're just telling that story. And because it's our own data, and we can tell stories. So I don't need to wait for the next trending topic or something. I can just keep pumping this up. And I think Rahul also does the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Next, I don't have a different answer. This is the same thing we do. We look at our own data, which we have, again we are an internet monitor, right? So we have so much of data coming. We, we have, as of now we have 80, uh, 80 terabytes of data, and then you know just we have we have built a team, a small team, which is actually looking at that data, trying to build stories out of it, interesting insights out of it, and then just putting it on our website. Um, again, it, it, it definitely gets immediate buy. No, not really, right? But it's actually building the traffic. It's actually building. Uh, people are reading about your stories, and eventually it will get get returns. So uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, so now uh, coming to the the situation that we all into, right? There are three four comments plus question on uh, this COVID nineteen and how this is changing the entire paradigm and is bringing new normal. Probably cybersecurity is the one who probably people are saying would be. Will be getting out of this particular uh, thing but how what changes that you are making uh, uh, to the marketing plan or any new ideas that you are thinking or you are reflecting on how exactly you will be approaching uh, because the most of the people are working from home not their offices there will be less of the physical contact so would, is it changing the way the you would be uh, doing your marketing activity I think if you're not changing it, you're going wrong. Now, there's interesting things here because there are no right answers. For example, digital marketing is obviously something that's important right now. You ramp it or because it's discretionary as an expense and you want to keep costs low, you reduce. I think this is really difficult decisions for, for CEOs. I can give my example and I wrestled with it for a lot because obviously like any smart entrepreneur, you want to cut your costs when things are difficult, right? Uh, I took the call that I will optimize cost in other areas, but I will increase my cost um, significantly, significantly to the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars more a year uh, on digital marketing. Uh, the thing is, where? Because everyone's going to do that. So how do you make sure that your digital marketing is something useful and it's not just everybody saying the same thing because everyone's going to do it. There are thousands of vendors in security. The CISO doesn't want to hear from you. So we have some plans. Um, I don't really know whether they'll work, but a lot of it is account-based marketing. Uh, I am going to be using uh, more. I'm going to give ads an ex a try. I, I firmly believe in experiments. You know, if you're if you're not afraid of failure, every experiment you learn from. So I screwed up Google Ads before. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it with more money because I think I didn't put enough money into it. Is it an existential threat to my business? No, I can stop it if I don't see it working. So it's okay to spend it. Uh, will I go and will I go sponsor RSA? Probably not, you know, right? Um, yeah, well, I mean, maybe, right? But uh, that really depends on is it worthwhile to do that? You know, what's the, it's again comes to those metrics. If you have those metrics and you believe that when you sit and think about it, that yeah, it's going to cost me X and I think I'll get Y. Like someone told me your cost per lead is so high, you know? And I was like, do you know how much I sell at? Do you know my, my cost price? So they were like, no. So I was like, it doesn't matter to me because I can spend that money 
and that lead is converted within the, the first minute that he buys my product. It doesn't matter from an industry perspective, my cost per lead is actually like maybe twice what other people charge. So I think it's really just having data, have a strong CFO and say, my CFO is designed to only do one thing, stop Sahil from spending money and question my assumptions. <laughs> that, that's literally all her job is. Like my crazy head schemes, she's like, where's the data? Where's the metrics? How much will it cost? And by when will you pay it back to me? And that makes me think. So I've increased my digital marketing spend. I think everybody should consider it. If not for anything else, run experiments because the, the, the world has changed under you. If you're not going to change either plus or minus, you're dead. I, I used to play a lot of uh, poker, semi-professional poker. And in poker, if you're the guy who's always calling the hand, you're losing. You either need to raise or hold. Don't do anything else. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So just to add to that, I mean, the reason why I, I like Sahir is, I mean, same goes to Sanjay as well, is that they are very interested in learning new things, right? I mean, Sahir is never like, yeah, I know this particular concept. Like every time he calls or I call him, I mean, he's very interested in learning new concepts or new things. Same as what to answer this question, right? I mean, look at Air, Air Meetup right now. We have almost 100 people listening to this conversation. Is Was there an opportunity to brand another brand in this conversation, right? It's something we have to research and find out. Now, there would be at least 10 other companies like Air Meetup or similar technology where it's going digital or content is going moving into a digital per se. Can we brand in those places? It can be only figured out by doing some sort of research or being no. very, very curious to identify what is the possibility, right? Every day you wake up and say, hey, what more can I do? What more can I do? What is the new thing we can figure out? And and, and if you if you are not pushing our team to learn new things and you yourself are not learning new things, none of this thing would happen. So again, I, I follow the same strategy, push the team to go find out 10 new ideas. Right? It, it might be crazy, by the way. It doesn't really matter. Right? I mean, some of them will work, some of them would not. But that's okay, right? You you have the satisfaction of trying it out, then not, right? I mean, so so I mean, the first thing I will do after this call would be to reach out to someone at Air, Air Meetup because I'm interested with their technology, and I would say, you know, are you guys are you guys advertising, right? I mean, I would ask that. I will ask. I mean, I, I, I can see my colleague Sahil also here. I mean, I, obviously, he's going to do the same thing as well. Right? So that's that's the way it is. Look at every new opportunity, every new things. Go research about it. Find out new ways about doing things. And then keep evolving. There's a lovely quote by Steve Jobs, something along the lines. I don't remember it exactly, but he's like, the world changes for you the day you realize that everything that is built around you, all these great institutions, etc., were built by people who were as average or as smart as you were. And the second you realize that, that means you can influence and you can change that world. The second you see that, you're like, why can't I be a billion dollar company? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Why can't I kill my competition? Why can't I win that deal? And sometimes it sounds like cheerleading, but I promise you, uh, when you internalize it, you become absolutely fearless. And that fearless is not out of bravery. We're risk management professionals. I could speak for Raul as well. You know, risk management professionals, we're risk averse. We're like, damn, we don't want to take risks. But as entrepreneurs, if you if you can just think about failure in terms of I learned something and I didn't die, then that's a wonderful place to be. And for whoever it helps, uh, we, we have a principle in Smokescreen from uh, Nissim Talib's book, Anti-Fragile. So we always think when a situation comes up where everybody's under stress, like things are bad, how do we not just survive? How do we thrive, right? The opposite of fragility is not strength. The opposite of fragility is anti-fragility. Like your bones, when they're stressed, they don't just, they're not just robust, they get stronger. Your immune system gets stronger when you are exposed to disease. So similarly, as a startup, can you think about being anti-fragile? Right now, your marketing function, everybody's saying marketing is going to get completely messed up, right? Instead of that, can you think about how you can do something where you will try? Just go look at Zscaler stock, go look at the Zoom stock. They're anti-fragile to this problem right now. Hopefully, Air Meet stock. You know, I mean, not stock, but you know, their business. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm totally going to go talk to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> we should have them yeah. to find out how they did it. Yeah. yeah, they're still on this event, but they are silent right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they are listening to us. <laughs> Great product. So uh, I think we have a uh, 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 really a great conversation both thanks uh, Saeed and Rahul and we briefly have uh, Ion Kailash as well with us uh, for some time and he talked about uh, uh, his one. So 
मैं आई थिंक दिस इज प्रॉब्ली लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन आई वांट टू टेक एंड प्रॉब्ली विद दिस क्वेश्चन आल्सो मैं विल लाइक टू प्रॉब्ली कंक्लूड द टुडे डिस्कशन देयर आर सम अदर फनी क्वेश्चंस एज वेल एज आई वी आर आंसर दोस क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन एंड चैट बॉक्स राइट सो इट्स ऑन अ इट्स ऑन अ प्राइसिंग मॉडल लाइक एंड आई एम नॉट श्योर in a very low touch kind of a business model your pricing matters but when it is very deep b2b kind of a thing probably the pricing is is largely the customer and you an interaction between you right so is there anything uh, uh, which can be thought in terms of intervention of marketing function to justify your pricing or uh, do the competitive of your pricing so what role that marketing plays in the price critical role absolutely critical role because essentially if you don't know your cost of customer acquisition which is a combination of your marketing and your sales uh, efforts uh, you don't know what your your how much it cost you to get someone in the door you can close tons of sales but then you find that um, you are spending more on acquiring and this is not a problem funnily it's not an issue there's a book by the linkedin founder called blitz scaling where he talks about inefficient growth where you can actually spend with a higher cost of customer acquisition then you make money we know a number of companies that do it in order to scale so it's inefficient growth you can't keep it it's not capital efficient but you can do it so here's how marketing influences pricing for for my perspective one competitive analysis they know what your competition charges and they know how they know the skus and price list backwards two they know the market dynamics and what the market will support from maybe surveys maybe talking to customers etc cetera, etc cetera. so they understand the landscape of competing products and what the market will bear uh, they then find a way to help you package that pricing so for example if you visit my website right now most people think of smokescreen as being a solution for hundreds of thousands of dollars we change our um, our pricing uh, packaging we have something for for that as well you can go buy smokescreen for $7000 a year and that's marketing packaging my pricing packaging my features into a price point for a given segment and persona of customer so it's absolutely i would say probably 60% of it is marketing driven yeah so rahul briefly you want to add to that yeah there is so, one question that is there for you but you can brief yeah. after that over the chat because it's all just asking what do you mean by sick cloud sick <laughs> uh you know it's yeah, I'll think yeah. that actually yeah. so i mean the pricing thing right it's very important so i'll think yeah. that um also the thing is we are building software right or any any commodity the price is what you ask for by the way okay of course there is a cost for you to build it there's a cost for you to maintain it there's a cost for you to build further all those things are there so we are we are, you can come to a particular price but then that's not it right it can always be more than what you what you make it look like right i mean you can have a bicycle and say this is a $1000 bicycle you can also say this is a $100 bicycle right it's always the way how you pitch it makes it uh you know uh you know big smaller so that's one thing so there's no no particular way i mean i would say you know this is the standard way that you can come right it's always the way you pitch it you think your bicycle is worth 1000 yeah then i'll explain how why it's worth 1000 and you can sell it and there is a buyer that's how it is done but then i also have to say that don't overdo this okay and i'll give you a very good example if you see the sugarcane vendors in in bangalore or mumbai right i mean they sell sugarcane juice they yeah, sell yeah. sugarcane juice for 10, 10 rupees 10 rupees or 8 rupees okay 10 rupees they sell sugarcane juice with lime lime they they can mix it with lime or they can mix it with ginger if you look at the cost of lime one lime is almost 3 to 5 rupees ginger costs nothing but the vendors actually sell it at the same price So I was always curious. I mean, why they sell the same thing at the same price? Normal sugarcane juice plus mixed with nimbu and or ginger, all of them at the same price. So I just went to like ten different sugarcane vendors and asked, "Baya, why are you doing this? You can actually sell the one with lime for fifty and the one with ginger for ten rupees, right? You can you can mix it up and you can make more money." And all of them said, "No, Baya, we are making enough out of this." So you need to always know when to stop also. just because you can price it very heavily doesn't mean you should you should know what is the best what is enough and then you should uh, sustain with that as well I mean, that's my again my personal perspective that's it no that, that, that is right. great perspective and great input uh, rahul and i'm really 
really enjoying and uh, but we still have a limit of time so we need to now close and uh, uh, great great talking to both of you hearing kailash as well and i think we discuss lot about technology in many of the